This is Dr. Novak again. What I'm going to be doing is an unboxing of this. This is an Eheim surface skimmer. And I've been watching videos on this particular product. Okay, this is the Eheim skimmer 350 okay and I've been I watched some videos on it and people have been having problems with it one guy actually the first video that came up on this uh, the guy said he hooked it all up put it in his tank turned it on nothing unplugged it turn it on it wouldn't turn on even if he unplugged it the thing wouldn't go on and he said he's sending it back and he figures that is the reason people are complaining about this well, I've used skimmers before. I used uh, Lee skimmers. And Ehi makes a surface sludge remover skimmer. It's green. It's big, bulky. Um, not that this isn't bulky, but the skimmers that skim off the top, you connect to your canister filters. They have a problem where if they become clogged with a leaf or snail, they will start sucking in air and they'll bounce up and down. And uh, there's a float, and the float starts bouncing up and down. Your canister gets air, and your canister can become airlocked. And if it becomes airlocked, it's not going to push any water out, and you can burn up your motor because there's no water going through, cooling off the the uh, stator and the rotor. So I saw something like this, and I thought, well, maybe this would be a good idea because I've tried the other ones, and they didn't seem to work. So maybe using this Eheim would work. Uh, they, they also, a lot of Japanese companies make the same thing. Okay, this is just an Eheim. I noticed that there are either Japanese or Chinese companies that are copying this particular skimmer. The skimmer is very tiny. It is. It's, it's very tiny. And it looks like the, it's got a lock in there. There's little fins in here so it doesn't spin around it actually just locks in I would say it's no more than uh, two and a half inches from here to here to two inches so it's made to be put at the very top of your aquarium it's not made to be put at the bottom it's basically just a skimmer um, it floats because of the openings at the bottom here will trap air and that's exactly how the other ones work, the same way. They, they float too. But the problem is with the motor. And the first thing they tell you is you're supposed to turn it to low. But let us let's me see if I can get this taken apart here. It comes with a sponge. A little bitty sponge, which you can replace this easily by making your own. It has little clip-ons. Nothing elaborate about it, nothing much to it. Here's the pump. All this does is block off this so when it squirts into your aquarium. But we need to take this off. Now, I'm looking at this and I can see there's an impeller in there with three blades, very small impeller. But the reason this, if you push down on this impeller, okay, what there is is you have the impeller here. If I can get this out. I don't know if I can even get this out. Okay. They have a permanent shaft in there, and that shaft can't be moved. Now, the problem is with these motors is twofold. One is the laminations that are in these pumps. There's laminations in here. This is called the stator, and this part of the motor would be called the rotor. 
would make sense. Inside here is laminations. And uh, I'm sure they're not using the best laminations or anything for this. But what happens is when they put the lambs in here, if they're not exactly perfect according to the shaft, what will happen is this may go up when it starts or go down. And as we know, we use 60 hertz here, so that means 60 times a second the electric is pulsing and it spins the rotor. It, uh, it seems to be a problem because people say, well, they don't work. They freeze up. Well, that would be right because if the impeller's in there and it gets pushed down, it's either not going to spin or it's going to jam up. If the shaft is not absolutely perfect in the center, uh, there's a lot of play in here. So they got a more than enough clearance between the stator and the rotor. So the first thing you have to do, if you watched one of my videos from a long time ago, how to fix an Eheim filter. First thing you want to do, remember I did the video on making the little plastic washers? Remember these little washers I told you how to make? And you put them in your canister filters. I don't know if you can see that, but they're... They're little plastic washers I made out of a lid from a butter dish. And you drill a hole in the center of them. And now you use these for pumps. And a lot of these pumps may need just a little plastic washer. And let's see if we can't get that. Okay. Yep, the plastic washer is down there. Now let's put this back on and see what happens. Still, still it's rubbing on the bottom, even with that plastic washer. So we're going to have to remove this. And we'll add another one. Should really get tweezers for this. That makes two of them. And what do you know? Look at that. How freely that spins. So it takes out, then now that leaves a little bit of clearance between the bottom here and the bottom here. Okay, those two little washers leave a little clearance. And now, look at that, how freely this spins. Just like I told you, sometimes you may have to do that with your pumps, Eheims, Fluvals, stuff like that. They all have a shaft like this, but sometimes they pull the magnet down the magnet may rub on top of the surface, slow it down, or even stop it all together. If it pulls it down a lot, the magnetic field from your stator. So, it looks like, from what I've seen here, boy, does that, now that's a lot different. Look at this. As soon as you push it, it's flipping. So that's what it needed. Just a couple of these little work. That's what I thought was wrong with it. The people complaining that they don't work right out of the box. And you can watch my video. You can look it up on the uh, YouTube where I explain exactly how to make these little washers. They come in handy for all kinds of motors that you may buy. And you can see a big difference with me just adding the two little washers onto this. 
And we'll put this back together. This goes on here. And of course they give you three little suction cups. Yeah, I kind of figured when I saw the video and the guy said people were complaining that uh, these things weren't running and they were having trouble, making noise, whatever. I kind of figured right off the bat that it's the, it's the age-old problem of trying to get the rotor to spin freely. Oh, look at that. Anyhow, uh, just make sure you uh, wet the suction cups or lubricate them. They're easier to get in then. Here it is running, and believe it or not, within just a few minutes, it completely cleaned the top of the aquarium. It took all the protein off, and uh, it's running right now as I'm finishing up this video, and the whole top is completely clean, and all that protein is taken away and uh well it works and it's very quiet i have to admit that that you don't even know it's running it is extremely quiet so until next time it's dr novak enjoy your fish keeping and uh, stay tuned for my other videos and thank you for watching <music>